Okay, so we're on fundamentals of logic, and what I want to say is you guys better do well in fundamentals of logic because in discrete mathematics, well, in like the first first couple of chapters in discrete mathematics or your first term in discrete mathematics one, fundamentals of logic is going to save your ass if you're doing poorly in the whole entire course. So with, without further ado, let's get on with it. So the first thing you gotta do is we gotta know some definitions, like like any like learning anything else. You gotta know some definitions. So first we gotta learn what a statement or a proposition is. Now propositions or statements are pretty much the declarative sentences that are either true or false. So let's look at these statements that we have here that I have in blue. Combinatorics or P P is uh, combinatorics is a required course for sophomores. Q J K Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series, and R, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Now, what we call these is, we call them primitive statements. So we call them primitive statements for a reason. Primitive statements. And you can see that I've actually changed my app because Harry will fucking, fucking shat on me and it got destroyed. But, back on track, P, Q, and R are called primitive statements. Why are they called that? Because they are a fact. That, that is, they are either true or they're, they're false. They're declarative statements or declarative sentences that can be said as true or false. Now, how about these two sentences? What a beautiful evening. There's an exclamation and get up and run. That's a command. What do you think? Are these primitive statements? Well, they're not primitive statements. The reason is because they vary. What a beautiful evening. Well, evenings could be rainy, sunny, or cold or hot. So you can't that you can't really say if it's true or false. That so that's really not a primitive statement. Get up and run. That command that can happen at any time. It can happen. Uh, it can happen when you wake up, or it can happen while you're sitting on a chair. So that varies as well. So we do not regard sentences such as exclamation or commands as statements because they don't have a truth value. So they can't really be said true or false at any time. But for primitive statements, they primitive statements can be said can be answered as true or false at any time. So that's why they're called primitive statements. So these ones are not uh not primitive statements. So now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and continue. So what we have now is we have a couple of rules that you gotta learn before doing anything else in fundamentals of logic. And the first thing you gotta learn is negation. And this the symbol for negation is kind of like a gun. So if you see a gun like like symbol, then that's negation. So let's for example let's say that P is read as P, then what would we read uh, shotgun P as? Well, what we'll read it as is that we'll read it as uh, not P. Not P. So that is what the negation means. If we have a P, then we just negate it. So if I said uh, that you have to take this math, math course, then putting that shotgun in front of that statement would be you don't have to take that math course. So that's the idea behind negation. So if, for example, our P in the last statement was combinatorics as a required course for sophomores. If we put a shotgun in front of the P, then it will read combinatorics is not a required course for sophomores. And that's the, that's the basis behind, uh, behind negation. Now compound statements are a little different. They're not as simple as negation, but they're, they're still pretty simple. So the first one I want to go through is conjunction, and this is uh, this is the symbol for that is an upward caret, and it's read as and. So if we put p caret q, then that is read as p and q. And referring back to the statements that we had, p and q, it will be read as combinatorics is a required course for sophomores, and J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series. So that's how we read those statements with the conjunction and. Now B, 
disjunction. This is an inclusive disjunction because there are two there are two kinds of disjunctions as you can see. B and C are both disjunctions, but for B we just have uh, an upside down caret symbol, and for C we have an upside down caret symbol and a bar under it. So B is read as or, and it's true if P or Q or both P and Q are true. So that's what we mean by inclusive. So this could be read. This could be written as P under uh, up, uh, upside down caret symbol and Q, or that is equal to P or Q. So this is this statement is true when we say that common torics is a required course for sophomore, or J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series, or combinatorics is a required course for sophomores and J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series. So if, if, if P or Q is true or P and Q is true, then that statement is true. Now let's go back. Disjunction with the exclusive disjunction is the opposite. It's true only if P or Q is true, but not when both P and Q are true. So, in this case, we will consider it true when uh, combinatorics are required for sophomores or when, uh, or when J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series. But if this, there is a statement that says, uh, that says combinatorics is a required course for sophomores and J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series, and J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series, and that is not true in this case. So it's written as P upside down, carry it with a bar Q, um, or yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much uh, it for this page. So yeah, you just gotta know the difference between exclusive and inclusive disjunctions. Inclusive disjunction, P or Q, or both P and Q are true, and exclusive, exclusive disjunction is true when P or Q is true, but not when both P and Q are true. So moving on, we have implications. So this is symbolized by uh, an arrow, and this arrow, uh, this, arrow is pr this arrow pretty much means implies. So if we have P implies Q, that's pretty much P arrow Q, or the implication of Q by P. There are different ways of saying it, such as if P then Q, Q is necessary for P, P is sufficient for Q, and P only if Q. Now P in this whole statement is the hypothesis, and Q is the conclusion. And, uh, I don't know, an example of this is using our common torques and Harry Potter example. Uh, then we would we could say that the statement for P implies Q is if common torques is a required course for sophomore, then then J K Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series. So that's an example of how you would uh, how you would give the statement for P implies Q with P and Q uh, representing those two statements. D is a biconditional, and this is represented by an arrow with uh, with two arrowheads on both sides, and it is P if and only if Q. So this only happens if P if Q happens, then P must happen. If P happens, then Q must happen. That is why we have that if and only if. So uh, this you might have done in high school because I, I think indirectly every high school math class should have taught this, but if they haven't, then you could say that combinatorics is a required course for sophomores if and only if J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series. So that's a statement with P and Q um, representing those two, uh, those two statements. Other than that, let's finish off with, this, with an example. Now, zero is always considered to represent false, and one is always considered to represent true. Now, what I have here is P equaling to zero and one. I want you to find a negation of P. So you can just take a moment to pause the video and do that. But the answer to that is um, 
well, p is equal to 0 for this first one, so not 0 is equal to 1. And uh, if p is equal to 1, then if it's not 1, then there can only be other, one, other, uh, one, other, one other number for that, and that's 0. So in this case, there are only two numbers, 0 or 1. If, it's, if p is 0, then not 0 is 1. If p is 1, then not 1 is 0. It's pretty simple in, in this sense. So uh, I think you should have gotten that. Other than that, please rate, comment, subscribe, and we'll talk more about truth tables in the next video. Uh, the definitions that you've learned here are pretty much just for you to understand how to make a statement with, with P and Q representing some sort of statements, how to combine statements. But the important things are going to come up in the next video, and that is on truth tables. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time.